This is Matthew Cratter from Trady University. And today I want to talk about why Bitcoin mining is actually good for the environment. There's been a lot of energy FUD around Bitcoin over the past 10 years. Here's the famous prediction from 2017 in which this article declared that Bitcoin mining was on track to consume all of the world's energy by 2020. Here we are in 2022. I still seem to have some electricity available to me. It looks like Bitcoin isn't using everything. If we look at the actual numbers that the Bitcoin network consumes by the, the Bitcoin miners who carry out the proof of work algorithm, it's approximately, call it 100 terawatt hours per year. There's a there's a wide range here, but this is a generally accepted number right here. It says 96 terawatt hours. If we look at global energy consumption and production, which I'm taking here from the Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index, electricity pr uh, production globally is about 26,000, 27,000 terawatt hours. Consumption is less than that as it always needs to be because you build for peak demand. Global electricity consumption, about 22,000, 23,000 terawatt hours. Bitcoin share of that, the entire Bitcoin network is 0.43%, which is quite a long way from using 100% of the world's uh, electricity. In terms of the energy production of the entire world, it's using about 0.15%. Again, that is just 15% of 1%. So it's still using a tiny, tiny amount of global electricity. And the thing about the Bitcoin network is it scales and you can have more and more transactions. You can have transactions on the Lightning network, but it scales without necessarily using more electricity. These comparisons are also quite unfair to Bitcoin since Bitcoin miners are also able to use stranded and wasted energy. So I would argue that we really shouldn't count a lot of this towards global energy or electricity usage if the energy was going to be wasted anyway, because it's not like these Bitcoin miners who are using wasted and stranded energy, as we're going to see in this video, are actually stealing electricity from you and me, from residential users and driving up our bills. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please hit that like and subscribe button. So we always see these, these articles about how Bitcoin consumes more electricity than Sweden, consumes more electricity than Ukraine. We never see these articles about how wars in Ukraine and proxy wars between superpowers, how much electricity or energy or human destruction that consumes. But if we use the, the example of Sweden, this is how many kilowatt hours it consumed in 2018, which is the most recent numbers I could find. That's about 127 terawatt hours. Uh, and so if we compare that to 100 terawatt hours, it looks like Sweden is actually still using more, or even in 2018 was using more energy than the Bitcoin network. But to put this stuff in perspective, there, there are actually many industries and many activities that consume more electricity than small countries. And most of the time, the powers that be, the elites, the Davos crowd, the World Economic Forum folks, the central bankers, the investment bankers, the fiat politicians do not have a problem with this. So for example, I don't know of any central bankers or investment bankers who actually hang their clothes outside to dry. Their wives probably are afforded the privilege of having automatic washing machines and dryers and dishwashers, etc., etc. But if we just look at dryer usage for so clothes dryers, these consume about 71. This is actually from 2014, so these numbers are much smaller than they would be today. But it consumed dryers in the U.S. consumed about 71 terawatt hours in 2014, just in the U.S. So globally, clothes dryers consume much, much more energy than small countries like Sweden or the Ukraine. But no one has a problem with this because they think that clothes dryers are useful, and I think they're quite useful as well. Here's the thing. If you've already made up your mind that Bitcoin is a useless invention and serves no purpose, you are going to say that any energy usage by the Bitcoin network is bad, even if it's just 0.15% of global electricity usage. But should we really judge what other people use their electricity for? And should we allow people who don't understand anything about Bitcoin tell us that it wastes electricity? These people perhaps prefer their fiat politicians and their central bankers to be in charge, and they don't really understand the freedom and self-sovereignty that something like Bitcoin can give people. But the bigger question is who actually appointed these people to be our global energy police? I never voted for anyone to tell 
to have them tell me what I can use my electricity, my natural gas for that I've paid for with money that was earned honestly. And this is the problem. There are a lot of different opinions out there. Vegans think that using a kitchen oven to cook a turkey is a waste of electricity. Carnivores think that using a kitchen oven to cook a tofurkey or fake turkey roast is a waste of electricity. I think you should be able to use whatever you, your kitchen oven to cook whatever food you like to eat. When we've already talked about dryer usage, uh, closed dryer usage, but these are some other questions we might ask and Bitcoin's critics should ask. How much global electricity usage is consumed by server farms that host pornography, cat videos, government propaganda, central bank, central banker propaganda, and just people arguing with each other and being mean to each other on social media. That being said, people seemed to like these uses of the internet, and so they continue to exist, even though some of them are extremely toxic, like government propaganda. Pornography is obviously a very toxic, addictive thing for young men as well. Bigger question, how much energy do banks and financial services companies consume globally? Think of all those skyscrapers in LA or Manhattan or Chicago, full of bankers and all those worthless bank branches with huge lobbies and parking lots and ATMs and things things like this. These take up a lot of space. They have a very big energy and electricity and carbon footprint. And then if we scroll out even more, we can ask how much energy is expended in forcing the US dollar as global reserve currency? We've talked about this before, how the US dollar, instead of being secured by proof of work, it's secured by proof of war. If you're someone like Saddam Hussein or Gaddafi and you try to move away from the US dollar and you don't have nukes, you end up getting destroyed by the US. And the US spent something like $5 trillion over the last 20 years on these wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and Libya and all over the Middle East. So these things are very expensive. They have a very large carbon footprint. They also kill lots of innocent people, lots of innocent women and children. And in the case of the Iraq war, it didn't seem to really accomplish anything. So here's a bigger question. What's the global carbon footprint of the US military? Now, you can argue that if it's actually protecting us, maybe it's a good use of use of energy. I don't personally want to be forced to speak Mandarin, even though my kids speak Mandarin, and I don't want to be forced to use a social credit score. I don't want to have to report to the CCP. So if the US military is doing its job and protecting us from China, which is perhaps doubtful, maybe the energy footprint is worth it. But when you're talking about energy usage, you always have to examine the trade-offs and what is involved. And you also have to make allowances for other people to use electricity in the way that they want to use it. So here's proof of war. This is what secures the US dollar. I would say that the carbon emissions footprint of this is quite large. So let's move on now and try to make the argument that Bitcoin mining is actually good for the environment. I think this is a fairly easy argument to make. There are many, many examples. I'm going to cover just two main examples in this video. The first one we're going to talk talk about is something called APG, Associated Petroleum Gas. And this is a form of natural gas that's found alongside deposits of petroleum, crude oil, etc. It's either dissolved in the oil or it's sitting in the reservoir above the oil. So this is a can be a byproduct of extracting crude oil from the earth. Now what usually happens to this natural gas or what happens to a lot of it is it ends up getting vented. In other words, it gets just directly released into the atmosphere, hopefully in small amounts in in places like the US. But these are obviously, if you're worried about something like global warming or carbon emissions, this is, uh, this is obviously not something that you wanna do. The other way these, these, these uh, gas deposits, these APGs are handled is through flaring, where you basically light it on fire and you convert it to uh, it's, it burns fairly dirty, but in this way you convert at least some of the methane into carbon dioxide. So these are huge wastes of natural gas, which can obvious, obviously be used by power generators to create electricity or can be used directly to heat your house, for example. Now, why would you flare or vent or otherwise waste natural gas? The reason would usually be because it's just not economically viable to to uh, connect it, to convert it to LNG, liquefied natural gas, or to move it around in a natural gas pipeline because the location is too remote, it's too far from the coast, for example, it's too far from population centers, or just the amounts are too small. 
but if you if you aggregate all the amounts that are being vented and flare just in the U.S., it ends up being quite a bit of natural gas. So it's wasted energy, and it does contribute to carbon uh, and greenhouse uh, grass, greenhouse gas. I'm sorry issues. Now here's a company that's trying to do something about it. A great company called Great American Mining, and what they do is they basically have these trailers with Bitcoin miners on them that they can rapidly deploy. It looks something like this and they can take it to your location. And so instead of flaring or venting the natural gas, you will basically burn it. You'll convert it to carbon dioxide, which is much less bad for the atmosphere than, uh, than methane is. And then you will use this, the electricity generated to run Bitcoin miners on the spot. So this is a nice way of monetizing it, preventing unnecessary flaring and venting. So that would be one environmental use of Bitcoin mining. Another one, the final one we're going to talk about has to do with landfill. This is sort of the, the modern euphemism for garbage dumps or dumps, which is what we called them when I was a kid. And it turns out that landfill gives off a lot of methane gas just as things naturally break down. This report from the EPA, which I'm not sure you can totally trust, but at least it gives us a ballpark figure. It says that uh, methane released by landfills represents almost 17% of total U.S. Anthro anthropogenic methane emissions. And so it's a, it's a big problem. Again, if you're worried about this sort of thing, which I'm not necessarily saying that, that I am, but we're trying to make the ESG argument here. One way of dealing with this, because as I said, methane is much worse as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Here's another article that talks about that's 25 times worse than carbon dioxide. So one solution would be to use this landfill methane to burn it and convert it to carbon dioxide, again, which is much less bad as a greenhouse gas, and then use the electricity generated to run Bitcoin miners on the spot. And so here's another company called Vespin Energy that is doing this. I'm going to link to it in the description notes below. The nice thing about these companies, Great American Mining Company and Vespin, is you don't require a grid connection. You don't have to build out a pipeline. Because Bitcoin mining machines, ASICs are so portable, you can just bring them to the site of the stranded or wasted or unwanted energy, and you can monetize and repurpose that energy. So here's a great example of how proof of work can help the environment in terms of mitigating methane and natural gas emissions. This is something that proof of stake obviously cannot do. So when Vitalik and all the Ethereans are virtue signaling about how they're moving to proof of stake. They really just understand nothing about the electric grid, about energy consumption, etc., as well as these uses of Bitcoin miners that are actually quite good uh, for the environment, I would argue. There's more to come in a later video. I'd also like to talk about how Bitcoin helps to stabilize the electric grid and also how it helps the in to incentivize the build out, not just of renewables, but also of nuclear energy. So this is a very, very big topic, the intersection of energy and Bitcoin. I think it's one of the most interesting things as well, and it hasn't been as explored as possibly it should be. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.